we will take a second look at spell checking and use an algorithm called noisy channel model. In this model, we assume that every word could potentially be a spelling mistake and we're going to use probabilities to suggest corrections. In the last video, we looked at an uh, algorithm called minimum edit distance, which was very good at finding non-word errors. For example, if you typed graph instead of giraffe, that word is not an English word. You could look for it in an English dictionary and you would not find it. But then you could try to find the words that resemble it the most, that have the minimum edit distance. For example, giraffe, where you only need to insert an I. In doing this, minimum edit distance could offer good suggestions for spelling corrections. However, you can also have real word errors, such as in this sentence, she's walking across the dessert. Minimum edit distance will find that the dictionary does include the word dessert and then say, oh, there's nothing wrong with that word. It looks fine. However, your human brain is probably telling you that you cannot walk across the desert. You can probably walk across the desert with just one S. We will turn those intuitions about which words can go next to which words into n-grams and into probabilities. And we'll use these to improve our predictions and spell checking. So let's start with a very simple error, uh, example of a non-word error. She's an amazing actress. When you get actress, which is not an English word, you're going to look for it in your dictionary and you're not going to find it. But you are going to find many words that are at, at a distance one. For example, actress, where you insert a T, or across, where you change the E for an O, or acres, where you delete one S. So there's several words that have the same edit distance. How can we decide which one is better? Again, your human brain is telling you that if it's amazing, it's usually an amazing actress and not an amazing across or amazing acres. We're going to use the model called noisy channel model. It assumes that the input is wrong and that we need to calculate the probabilities of some correct output given the wrong input that we got. So we need to calculate the probability of a correction given the uh, potential error that we are getting. There are several steps to calculating those probabilities. First, we uh, get our word, acris in this case, and then we go through our dictionary trying to figure out which words are one edit distance away. For example, actress is one edit distance away because uh, you need to delete the T from actress to get to actress. The word cress, it's a kind of plant, is also at one edit away because you would need to add an A to cress to have it become actress. So all of these are going to be our potential correction candidates. We need to calculate the unigram probabilities for each of those words. For example, actress occurs 9,000 9, times in the coca corpus, which has about 400 million words in English. Because it occurs 9,000 times, it has a probability of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, The word cress occurs fewer times. So it, the probability is two orders of magnitude less than the, than the probability for actress. So actress is much more frequent than cress. However, you might also see that there are other frequent words, such as across, which happens 120,000 times. So it also has a very high probability. The fourth thing we're going to do with our candidates is calculate the probability of the mistake itself. So we have the mistake, the, the, the potential error, actress, and we have a potential correction, actress. 
what what would have needed to happen in order for us to go from one to the other if you meant to type actress then you had to type a ct but instead just typed a c so you need to calculate the probability that you meant ct and ended up with a c so given ct what is the probability of c ending up in actress the second example is similar. What if you wanted Cress and mistakenly ended up with Acres? You would have needed to have nothing before the C and then mistakenly add an A in front of the C so that you meant Cress and mistakenly inserted an extra A and ended up with Acres. And there's a probability for that too. You'll be thinking, how do I calculate those probabilities? And of course, you'll need a database of mistakes that people have made in the past. Obviously, you, uh, you would need a lot of examples of these, and large languages do have those kinds of databases. This is a simple example in English where the column X has the incorrect version, the error that you ended up with. And the other columns have the correct version what you want it to type. So, uh, for example, if you ended up with a mistake A, but you actually wanted an E, that happens 342 times in this set. If you ended up with a mistake A, but you actually wanted an N, that happens many fewer times, only about three times. And this matches our intuition that spelling mistakes are probably going to happen with, um, you know, replacing vowels, for example. Almost nobody replaces an N for an A. So once you have that database, you can calculate the probability of wanting CT, an actress, and ended up mistakenly with just the C, actress. The probability of that is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 7, which is much larger than the probability uh, for crest, which is wanting nothing at the beginning of the word and ended up with a mistaken A. So we have two probabilities. The probability of the mistake, uh, with the mistaken characters, and the probability, uni the unigram probability of the words. So for the first candidate, actress, we had um, that we wanted a CT and ended up with a C so that we got actress in the actual document. We have the probability of ended up with a C given CT and we have the probability of the unigram actress and we multiply those. And then the textbook multiplied that by, t to, by 10 to the ninth power for clarity. This number would actually be 0 and then 0 0.9027. But we multiply it uh, by this large number so that we can read the probabilities more clearly. So you would end up with 2.7. That is the probability that the correction for actress is actress. Compare it to the second line, to cress, where the error was having nothing before the, before the C, and you ended up with a mistake in A before the C. You get the probability of that error and then the probability of the unigram crests, and then you get that probability, which is much smaller than actress. So actress is a much better correction than crests, even though they're both at the same minimum distance. Notice that there's an odd candidate coming into our uh, list of potential corrections, a cross. It's because it has a very high unigram probability. And so the probability of it being correct is actually a little bit higher than for actress. So we could end up with a system that proposes this. She's an amazing actress, and the corrections should be, she's an amazing across. She's an amazing actress. So we're halfway there. We have a good system for predicting the probabilities of the errors, but we have only unigrams to, uh, to measure the probability of the words. Let's enhance that, and instead of unigrams, we could use bigrams or even trigrams. In this example, we have the sentence, only two of two apples. 
And incredibly, thu, thu is a real word. It's a kind of muscle. So if you search for thu in the dictionary, you would find it. However, the probability of two of thu as a trigram is very low. As you can see in to the right in the second line, the probability of thu given the, the words two of is very low. However, the probability of the given two of is very high, 0 0.476. So this would be the trigram probability of two of the, or of the word the, given that you have two of. So let's look at the potential corrections. Um, we have several candidates that are one, a minimum distance at a distance of one, such as thaw, through, them, thwe, the. We also have the word itself, thu, and we assign a very high probability to that. We say that it's a 95% probable that it's correct. So we have the probability of the error itself. For example, that um, you wanted to, that if you have thu and you actually wanted to write the, you wanted to type an E and ended up with a mistaken EW. We have the probability for that. And then the probability of the trigram two of the. And then we multiply those. And in the text vector, multiply to 10 to the eighth power so that they can provide a more readable number, 333. This probability is much higher than the probability of Thu being correct. It's which is only 9.45, because the probability of the trigram two of two is so low. So we finally have a system that captures the intuitions that we had, that there are some words that make sense only in some context, and the spell checker is taking that into account when it makes its spelling suggestions. The noisy channel system gets candidates that are at a minimal edit distance, and itself. It gets the probability of the errors. So for example, uh, wanting to have an E and ending up with an E, W. It gets the probability of the n-grams. It could be the unigram thu or the trigram two of thu. And then it multiplies those probabilities to get the best suggestions. This is what the model does. We could make one final improvement, which is so, uh, make suggestions only when we're very sure that the person has made a mistake. Um, one thing about the system is that it's very aggressive and it will always offer suggestions because the probabilities are never zero. Because of this, commercial systems always have a threshold, a minimum probability that a, a, a candidate needs to pass so that it can be suggested as an error, or even more aggressively, so that it can be autocorrected. Something like Chewbacca ate teh last Mars bar. There, teh is very, very likely a mistake and should probably be the. So the system offers a uh, spelling suggestion. But commercial systems need a certain threshold before they can offer a suggestion. That's the summary of how contemporary spell checking works. You can get candidates that are at a minimum edit distance. You get the probability of the error, the probability of the n-grams. You multiply those probabilities to get a suggestion, and then you only offer the suggestions past a certain cutoff point. One final thing. Commercial systems always need to be learning because they're always going to be bumping into new words. So in your cell phone, when you type the word duck, when you type uh, the word and then you get duck, you go back, correct it manually, and then this will change the internal probabilities. This is how your phone learns that eventually it needs to start giving duck less probability and the word with the F more probability. And this happens for many words. Um, corpora really only include about 73% of the words actually put in web searches, for example, people are always going to come up with new words like wug, like me seeks, and the system needs to change its probabilities as it encounters these new words. 
in summary, spell checking improves when we include probabilities, and it improves even more when we include contexts or n-grams. These language models capture our intuition that some things in context look right and some do not. And as a summary for the week, n-gram models allow us to uh, model sequences of human words and the context of words at a short distance, two or three words, for example. This allows us to predict when two words are going to happen together. It lets us generate new strings of text. Our systems are always going to be bumping into new words, which we call out of vocabulary words, and we need to include probabilities for those and be ready to account for new words in our system. And as with any computer system, there's ethical considerations involved in what we're doing. We need to be mindful of the input that we're using to calculate probabilities of why we want to be generating sentences, of why we want to put spell checking into the system. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to be looking at machine learning, at support vector machines, and then at neural networks and deep learning.